When I was 13 years old, my grandmother had a stroke. And I remember this because it was during the summer, and it was a time where my brothers and I were actually visiting her at her house. And she came out of her room, and she was talking very incoherently. She was acting, or acting flustered and very strangely. And it wasn't until later that we actually even found out she was having a stroke. And I remember at the time, my feelings that I had of pain and resentment and wanting her to be okay. Now, she eventually did pass away later from the complications of the stroke, but I remember distinctly wanting to spend more time with her. And though even at the time, I was already interested in science and biology, I remember this point because it was one of the experiences that got me really interested in biomedicine and biomedical research and biomedical advancements. And if you think about it, this is a reason why a lot of biomedical advancements are done, because we have this innate characteristic as humans that we want to connect and spend time with people that we love, people that we care about. And this has allowed us to do a many great things and allowed us to change completely the landscape of biomedicine at a global scale. We now know more about biomedical technology and discoveries than ever before in life, and not just on the global scale, but also at the, the microscopic or cellular level. So we now know more things about things like viruses, for instance. And we've developed or created vaccines that can treat or, in some cases, eradicate or even nearly eradicate certain diseases caused by viruses like smallpox and polio. Another example is uh, induced pluripotent stem cells, where scientists or researchers are actually able to take cells from one part of the body, say the skin, and actually change those into a different cell type, which could be used to help treat patients with cardiac disease or heart attacks. And one of the more recent and interesting technologies is this CRISPR technology that we've all been hearing a lot about. We're actually able to genetically modify or edit specific parts of the DNA. And this has a lot of potential for potentially curing or at least treating genetic diseases like sickle cell anemia or cystic fibrosis. And this is a beautiful thing because it allows us to spend more time with our families, more time with the ones we love, and more time with the, uh, the people that we care about. And it's actually, as a result, it's allowed us to live longer and progress as a species and live more fulfilling and fruitful lives with the ones that we care about and for ourselves as well. And as a result, our population has actually increased and grown exponentially, uh, especially over the past few centuries. And this has been an amazing and beautiful thing. But um, one thing that I, I tend to think about a lot, especially as a biologist, is what does this mean in terms of all life on Earth? So, you know, we think about, uh, you know, living longer and wanting to live long, healthy, and fruitful lives. But what does that mean on kind of the, uh, the global scale? So we have, uh, you know, biology and life. It's a system that's been developed and created and optimized over millions of years to be as efficient and effective as possible. Kind of like a, a balance or a scale with uh, maintaining equilibrium. And, uh, you know, disease and even death are actually normal and necessary parts of the system, kind of like, you know, the circle of life in The Lion King. But um, one thing about biomedical advances in biomedicine is that with each discovery that we make, each cure that we find, we're actually tipping or we're actually changing the scale ever so much, ever so often with each new discovery or advancement that we have. Now, I don't think this is necessarily a bad or even a good thing. I think it's just something that's happening and a change that's occurring. But I think this is interesting because it's something that's unique to humans. See, humans are one of the only species that have been able to advance and come up with a lot of the discoveries and creations that we as humans do, which gives us a unique ability or a unique perspective to actually bypass certain things that would normally regulate or limit the expansion, growth, and progression of a species. And I think this is something that can be kind of summed up in a notion of something that's known as the Profectus Theory. This is a theory that states that humans have uniquely reached a level of advancement due to our high intelligence that allows us to bypass regulating or limiting factors that would traditionally regulate the growth or the progression of a species. And this is unique to humans because it allows us to advance beyond our wildest dreams and our wildest means.
but it also is something that allows us to tip this scale or tip this, uh, this balance ever so often in a way that no other species on this earth is able to do. And the thing about that that we have to realize is that, you know, no one wants to see someone that they care about die or undergo a hardship or go through a disease. That's normal. That's, that's what makes us human, our bonds and our strong emotional connections with other people. And I, I always, when I think about this, I always think about my grandmother and how if there were any treatment or if there's any type of therapy that could have prevented her stroke or even prolonged her life and made her uh, more healthy after she had went through this, I would have wanted this for her. And that's normal. That's part of what makes me human. That side of me that's feeling a uh, strong emotional attachment or bonds to other humans and people out there, that's what gives us or part of the characteristic of our humanity. And I don't think that that's something we should change, but it's something that I think we need to uh, think about in every time that we're looking or that we're going through with advancing biomedicine. It's, a, it's kind of a hard thing sometimes to juggle because, you know, on one side, you've got, you want to spend more time with the people you love, and that's an innate characteristic of our biology. And then humans, you know, we have to juggle, well, okay, but what about the implications of biomedical advances on not just human life, but life as we know it in that scale or that balance that's always trying to maintain itself? So it's a, it's, it's a very, you know, uh, interesting or fine line that we have to think about a lot as humans that we're uniquely put or positioned to think about this and actually undergo this as a species. And so I want to urge you, next time, you know, you get sick or even someone that you care about gets sick, think about how beautiful it is that biomedicine and biomedical advances are allowing you to spend more time with that person, spend more time learning and getting to know them better and building and bonding more efficiently. But I also want to, or I want to urge you to spend an equal amount of time thinking about what implications that has on not just humanity, but on the biological scale or balance of equilibrium that we're all a part of. Because as any scientist or engineer can tell you, a system can only withstand so much change in equilibrium before there are significant effects. Thank you.